All right, welcome back to week three of Fantasy Central. I'm Zach. And I'm Hefe. And we hope you guys did uh, pretty well over the weekend, fantasy football. I know I was one for one in my leagues. Uh, one, one, lost one. How'd you do, Hefe? I, uh, you know, the one money league that I'm in, I had a pretty bad week. I thought for sure I was going to go and be able to win my matchup. The dude I was playing only scored 81 points. And somehow, some way, I only scored 78 and I lost. Oh, no. Rough weekend, <laughs> huh? Yeah, it was tough. Damn. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, but as part of it, man, you never know with fan- fantasy football. It's uh, anything can happen any given week. But, you know, we are here to kind of give you guys an advantage. So we appreciate you tuning in. Uh, special shout out to all our WUBI Live listeners. Uh, welcome aboard. We look forward to building a relationship with you guys. Uh we kind of go over the wave wire picks, guys, that might still be on the wire. Uh, I know if you're listening to this after your waiver wire has already went through, there, these guys still might be out there, so you can make last-minute selections. Uh, and then Hefe is going to run down his top 10 running backs, his top 10 receivers for the week in fantasy. Uh, and then we might hit on some quarterbacks and tight ends towards the end. But uh, stick with us. should be a short, quick, sweet show. And uh, let's get to it. Hefe, you ready? Yeah, let's get into it. All right, guys that are on the waiver wire for week three fantasy football, Hefe, run them down. So I want to start with K.J. Osborne. And if you haven't heard that name, he's a wide receiver for the Vikings. He's in his second season. Uh, You know, didn't really hear about him much last year, see anything from him last year, and didn't really expect anything from him, right? They have Adam Thielen. They have Justin Jefferson. Everybody expects those guys to be studs. But K.J. Osborne, in just two games, has 15 targets, 12 of those being catches. He has a touchdown, which he just scored in this last game. And he, he right now he's currently wide receiver 19. Uh, his last game, he just had the 22.1 outing. Somebody that I would like to pick up on a few teams if I'm able to get them and if there's somebody I'm comfortable with dropping. Uh, so K.J. Osborne is up there, a guy we talked about last week um, and probably going to continue to talk about because people just continue to sleep on him. But Zach Pascal, currently wide receiver 22. And, you know, he, he hasn't had – the monster games, you know, he has, hasn't been top 10 either of these weeks, but he gets the red zone targets. He has nine catches on 11 targets through two games, and he has three touchdowns out of those nine catches. That's pretty damn good. And that's, it's unrealistic to stay at 30, 33% of his targets on the entire season are going to be touchdowns. That'd be great, um, but a little unrealistic. So expect a little bit of pullback, but I think he's, made a case for being a big part of the Colts offense. Yeah, absolutely. I I think, didn't you hit on uh, Zach Pascal last weekend too? Yep, sure did. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, Unfortunately for us, we are in, we're Indianapolis fans. We're from Indianapolis. So our leagues are filled with guys from Indiana. And so Pascal's already been taken in one of my leagues. Uh, The other league, I don't think he has. Has he been taken in, in, in the one I'm with you? Um, I don't believe he's on a roster. I'd have to check that. Oh, okay. I have to sneak in there for that. Uh, but yeah, Pascal, he's very underrated. He's been getting a hell of a lot of red zone targets, just like Hefe said. And he's been producing. He's been scoring touchdowns. I mean, they're far and few between for the Colts right now. Uh, but he's usually the receiver down there making the catch in the end zone for the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, so that's a hell of a pick there. I agree. All right, you want to keep moving on? Yep. Next up, we have Tony Pollard, who coming into the year felt like more of just a handcuff if something happens to Zeke. But right now, Tony Pollard is running back 10 in the league after two weeks. His last game, he had 23. And look, he has at least three catches in both games. And it sounded like and even looked like the Cowboys are going to continue to try to be more balanced in their games. And if they're going to be splitting carries and catches between Zeke and Pollard, then I mean Zeke and Pollard were both fantasy relevant this past week. Both had decent games. So um, it seems like after the first two weeks of watching Cowboys games, it looks like Tony Pollard is going to be a part of this offense and should absolutely be on somebody's team. Um, somebody else that I think is, is underrated is Adam Humphreys. 
Um, you know, he was in the primetime game, so everybody got a real good look at him. And, and you know, right now he's wide receiver 73. You know, it hasn't been anything spectacular, but uh, he was – getting the ball a lot when it mattered most for Washington in their game against the Giants. And if Taylor Heineke has that kind of relationship with Adam Humphreys, then I could see Adam Humphreys being, you know, the the clear number two receiver in that offense and being very fantasy relevant. Yeah, absolutely. And to go back on Tony Pollard, uh, I forget exactly how much time it was, but I saw some, some meme or something that it's been a significant amount of time uh, between the last time the Cowboys had a hundred yard rusher and uh, with the touchdown in a game. And it wasn't Ezekiel Elliott that did it last week. It was Tony Pollard. And also I would like to say that I was given a lot of shit uh, from our fantasy draft when I had the number six pick, you know how I felt about that. We talked about that. I absolutely did not want the number six pick. Uh, but in both of my drafts, I had a chance to draft Ezekiel Elliott and so Quan Barkley, for that matter. Uh, and I just decided to pass on him. And I had a feeling that Zeke's just not the same guy he was a couple years ago. And it sure seemed that Pollard is taking every advantage of that opportunity and stepping up and making the plays. Uh, so I would tend to lean more towards Pollard, especially with the stats he's been putting up fa- in the fantasy value there, rather than Ezekiel Elliott. And I know a lot of guys are going to clamor to that because they use him as the number one, their number one first-round pick. Uh, but Tony Pollard is seeming like he's the guy right now in Dallas. Yeah, it sure seems like it, which I, I didn't expect because, you know, I had heard so much in the offseason about Ezekiel Elliott. He's going to be – or he's in the best shape of his life. He's he's ready to come back and, and eat like he always did. And, and we just have not seen that. It's been evident when you watch the Cowboys games. He just doesn't look as explosive as he used to be. But Tony Pollard – looks very explosive and he's putting up numbers. Yeah, for sure. And, and that offense is, uh, they're high flying, man. They can put up hell of crazy stats if they, if they have to. So uh, Pollard might be the guy to go to, especially in deeper leagues if Pollard's sitting there, which he shouldn't be at this point, you would think. Uh, but if Pollard is there in, in like a 12 man league, man, that is a hell of a flex spot. Uh, yeah, no so I, I would go for that. Yeah. What'd you say? So, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, that'd be great. In a 12, like, uh, that's what I'm thinking, too, is, like, there's no way in a 12, 14, or 16-team league, like, he sh- there's no way he should be on the waiver wire at this point. Like, even going into the season, he should have been drafted. Like, the only way you should be able to pick up Tony Pollard right now is 10-team leagues. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's keep it moving. Number uh, Number five on your waiver wire list. So number five, you know, we've been here before. It's going to be Alexander Madison. We saw Dalvin Cook tweak his ankle. And assuming Dalvin Cook's going to be able to play because he came back in that game, um, assuming he's going to be fine to play this upcoming week, you know, I, I'm going to have him rank somewhere inside my top 10. But if he goes down, you know, Alexander Madison is going to be a great weapon to have. This is another one of those guys that in 12, 14, 16 team leagues, he was probably drafted by by somebody as a handcuff for Dalvin Cook. Um, but he, if he's available right now and you have somebody that you're kind of already stashing away, Alexander M- Madison might have more immediate value if something happens to Dalvin Cook. Um, and another guy, somebody I didn't even realize until a couple of days ago was even listed as a running back in the ESPN Fantasy app, Cordero Patterson. You know, coming out and having a huge game, Mike Davis – um, you know, I had a decent game. Um, you know, he, he got a lot of receptions too, but he, he's not, I guess, what Arthur Smith is looking for um, coming out of his backfield. And Cordell Patterson, uh, even though he's been in the league for, what, 11 or 12 years at this point, he's still explosive. He's a big body. Um, you know, you could almost say he moves a lot like Derrick Henry coming out of, out of that backfield, and he was making it happen, especially with his receiver skills. Um, I think that'll translate well, and if that role continues, then he's somebody that could have a big impact for somebody. I mean, right now he's he's listed at running back 12. This last game he just had 23.9 points. If that's something that he can continue, um, then he's going to be a steal for anybody that can get him off the waiver wire right now. 
Yeah, I was uh, I was actually looking into that earlier today. I agree with you on both of those guys, uh, especially Alexander Madison and Dalvin Cook. They should have a hell of a game against the uh, Seahawks. Yep, that's what I'm thinking too. The Seahawks are uh, – I'm pretty sure they're down towards the very, very bottom uh, when it comes to the rushing defense. So both of those guys should do well. And if Dalvin Cook isn't playing, Madison's going to be the guy to benefit nicely from that. Uh, so, all right, number seven on your waiver wire. Number seven, I think I may have mentioned him last week, uh, but J.D. McKissick, uh, he deserves to be on somebody's roster. We saw it last year. He was very fantasy relevant. And this week he came out, had a big performance, had 20.3 points in their win against the Giants. And he even got a goal line carry that, that was audible into a touchdown. Um, so it, it, even if he's splitting goal line touches then with with – Antonio Gibson, and that's going to make him um, pretty fantasy relevant. I was somebody that I would see as a flex option most weeks. You know, maybe you wait another week or two before you actually play him to see what the consistency is like there. Um, but I think he's going to have a pretty big impact on uh, rosters most weeks. And then the last waiver wire option I have here, saving the big one for last, is going to be Rod Dale Moore. Coming out right now, he's wide receiver 15. Uh, and in his last game, he just went off. He had 26.4 fantasy points. Uh, he has 11 catches on 13 targets. And in combined in those games, he has 17 yards per catch in those games. And obviously uh, the big 77-yard touchdown in this last game against the Vikings. So it seems like he's going to be a big piece of this offense. Um, it's going to be tough week to week, I guess, to to figure out where the targets are going to go because they seem to have so many options at receiver right now. Um, but I think Rondell Moore over the first two weeks has shown that he's built a rapport with uh, Kyler Murray. And Kyler Murray is comfortable with going to him. And that, I mean, Kyler Murray's throwing for a ridiculous amount of yards right now, you know. So if that keeps happening, you have to imagine that D Hop and Rondell Moore and Christian Kirk are all going to be pretty fantasy relevant. Yeah, especially they're playing the Jacksonville Jaguars this week, uh, who rank in the bottom five in terms of passing defense. So one of those guys, if not all of them, are going to get some very high targets, high reception, high value. Uh, I would imagine Arizona is going to completely blow them out. Um, so I, I actually have on my best starts for receivers, DeAndre Hopkins and Rondell Moore. Uh, so I agree with you there. And J.D. McKissick, I have him on both of my rosters. Unfortunately, I didn't play him because of how things worked out last week, uh, but he ended up getting me a good 20 points. I don't like the matchup this week against Buffalo, uh, but going forward, there are some very intriguing matchups that he should provide value for. Yeah, and I mean, even this week, you know, I obviously don't have J.D. McKissick on my top 10 list this week, but I think he he would have some value uh, going against the Bills because I think the Bills are going to be up in that game, and I think Washington's going to have to pass, and we know that J.D. McKissick is their um, – mostly their, their pass catching back. So I, I think he'll have some, some flex value this weekend. Yeah, hey, very well could. Uh, there is one guy I want to throw out here, and that is Quintez Cephas, wide receiver for the Detroit Lions. The first two games, he had seven targets each with 75 yards and two touchdowns. This week, they're going against the Ravens defense that statistically is the worst passing defense in the league right now. They're giving up 375 yards a game. They have the fourth most passing plays ran against them, the fourth most receptions against them, while giving up an average of 13 yards per reception, which is the fifth most in the league. So I like Quintez Cephas. He's not the number one receiver over there in Detroit, but he's still getting targets and he's still producing and he's getting touchdowns uh, for Jared Goff and the boys. So I like Quintez Cephas. Yeah, and, I, you know, I think what we've seen over the first two weeks, now that we got a chance to watch the, the Packers play the Lions, I think, you know, in Detroit, it doesn't seem like their offense at, is as inept as we thought it was going to be. It's not it's not amazing, but it's not the worst offense in the NFL like people were, people were thinking it was going to be. So, you know, if Jared Goff hasn't looked terrible. You know, once it started raining in that Packers game and, and the ball started slipping out of his hand, that was a problem mm -hmm. and things got out of hand. But – 
Um, I think, you know, go, between him, between Quintez and uh, Amon St. Brown, um, I think those two have a chance at some point. You know, they're all young, but I think at some point those are guys that have a good chance of being very fantasy relevant. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's uh, transition to your top 10 running backs on the week for week three fantasy football. Uh, do you want to start at number one? you want to start at number 10? Uh, let's start at number 10, work our way to one. I like that. All right, let's go okay. for it. All right, so number, number 10. Number 10 is going to be kind of a split deal. I, I have the Broncos running backs, both Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams. Um, they're going against the Jets. And if they're splitting carries, I mean, they, they literally just split carries completely evenly, 13-13 this past week. And if they're going to be splitting carries like that and they're going up against a bad team like the Jets, um, I think they'll both have value in this game uh, one way or another. So, you know, maybe both just flex options. You know, you, you can't expect either of them week to week to be a, a RB1 or RB2, I feel like. But I think they'd be decent in the flex this week. And kind of the same deal with the Ravens here. Um, I have Ravens running back. So you, you have Tyson Williams and Latavius Murray, I think, are both going to be at least flex options this week. Um, and, you know, I, I think, you know, Williams, Williams is going to get his. He's looked really good. And, and so I think he'll get his, maybe even score a touchdown um, and he'll have a decent day. But I think that the, when the Ravens get up in this game, which they will inevitably do, inevitably do, because uh, they played the Lions, I think they'll be able to uh, let Latavius Murray get in there and eat. And I think he'll end up having, like I said, at least a good enough day to be a good flex option. Yeah, I can't argue there. Uh, don't really have much to add. You're, you're hitting the nail on the head. So uh, number eight, number eight, a guy that I was big on this year, Chris Carson has had two pretty good performances. He's going up against Minnesota this week. Uh, they're 16th against running backs over the first two weeks of the season, so right there in the middle of the pack. But this just feels like a game that they're going to let Chris Carson do his thing and just out-muscle that defense that's uh, missing a couple linebackers. I think that's going to be a big deal in this game. Um, you know, you, you need some good linebackers to stop an elite running back. And I think that's what Chris Carson is. So it feels like he's going to be uh, a top 10 running back this week, even though Russ is eating and, and they're passing a bunch. I think Chris Carson will get the job done this week. And a guy that is you can you always got to have him in the top 10 somewhere. Right. So Derrick Henry going up against the Colts. Now, the Colts up to this point are actually 10th against running backs in the league, um, which is better than I thought. Um, after watching them for two weeks, um, but not terrible. And, you know, Derrick Henry's not going to get the catches. If he, was, if he got catches, he'd, you know, consistently be like a top three option. Um, but, look, the Titans found out in the second half of that Seattle game that they are better when Derrick Henry is getting the ball and doing what he needs to do. And I think they're going to carry over what they did there into this other game. Ryan Tannehill, you know, this offense, Titans offense, has a new offensive coordinator, right? Arthur Smith isn't there. So they're still learning on the fly right now. And you insert Julio into there instead of Corey Davis. Like, they're, they're trying to figure it out. Things will get better for the Titans offense. Um, and unfortunately, I think they take that step this week against the Colts. And uh, Derrick Henry should have a pretty good game, in my opinion. And another guy that is a star in the league but had pretty disappointing week after a pretty good week one, Alvin Kamara going up against New England, who are ninth against running backs over the first two games. And, you know, I, I'm just hoping – that week two was an anomaly and wasn't going to be the new normal. Like, is this going to be what we see from Jameis in this offense all the time? You know, cause that'd be very bad news for Alvin Kamara, but he's, he's so good. Like at some point he's going to break out. I think he, he's going to do his thing. It's not like you're going to sit Alvin Kamara at this point, you know what I mean? But um, it's something that I'm definitely watching. I think getting all their coaches back, this week is going to be helpful for the entire team. So I think uh, a good bounce back week is going to happen for Alvin Kamara, and he ends up as uh, running back number six. And then going into the top five here, right at number five, I have Nick Chubb. Now they're going against Chicago, who up to this point is fifth in the league against running backs. But 
he's just so good. Like he had less carries than Kareem Hunt this past weekend, but was more productive and scored again. Like this dude get, feels like he scores at least one touchdown every week. So, you know, he was too good not to be in the top five. I, I feel like they're going to get up in this game against Chicago and they're going to lean on that run game and let Chubb do what he needs to do and just body that defense all day long. So Nick Chubb, top five running back. Yeah, I'm kind of iffy on the Kareem Hunt and the Nick Chubb plays uh, this week against this Bears rushing defense. Um, I had them on my do not play list. Obviously, if you have Nick Chubb, you're going to play him because he's that good. He still will put up the points and the value. It's just a matchup that worries me. Um, but I do think he will still provide. Uh, I don't know about getting him in the top five, let alone top ten. Uh, but that's that's not my list. It's your list, isn't it? You already know. (laughs) All right, uh, number four. So number four, I have Austin Eckler, which he's had two weird games, right? But the first game he went in there and was getting limited touches and limited snaps because he was a little wounded. Um, But he came back and, and had a big game in the second game of the season. And here they're going against the Chiefs, which I expect this to be a high a high scoring game, uh, a lot of points being put on the board. And right now, Kansas City over the first two games is 29th against running backs. And he just came off a game, Austin Eckler did, with, with nine targets. That's great for a running back. Feels like he's going to have a really good opportunity to get another, you know, somewhere between six and nine catches again in this game, plus his usual rushing uh, workload. So I think he has a real good chance to have a very big game this week in KC, whether they win or lose, doesn't matter in fantasy, but Austin Eckler should be a baller this weekend. And then number three is going to be Aaron Jones. And this, this one was tough. I didn't really, you know, could Aaron Jones fall back a little bit, you know, have like a 10 point game, but I think they'll, I think the green Bay Packers have started to figure it out in that second half against the Lions. I think they'll carry that momentum into a matchup with the 49ers, the 49ers in the first two games are 30th against running backs. And, and look, I think, you know, Aaron Jones in the first game had four points. Aaron Jones in the second game had 41. I think there's going to be a happy medium somewhere in there where we're going to find Aaron Jones getting consistent value somewhere around 20 to 28 points. And the way the running backs points have worked out the first couple of weeks outside of this weekend with Derrick Henry and Aaron Jones going absolutely off. Um, running backs aren't scoring, uh, you know, 25 plus like that this year. So um, I think Aaron Jones has a really good chance to continue to get the workload in production. A.J. Dillon is not eating into his workload at all. So as long as Green Bay Packers can figure out how to keep that offense rolling, Aaron Jones should be a top five play most weeks, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. And I kind of want to hit on the uh, Austin Eckler. Uh, I think he will definitely have a huge game. The Chiefs are one of the worst run defenses uh, in the league. And their passing passing defense isn't very good either. Uh, They're the only team that has given up on average 200 plus yards rushing yards a game uh, and they have given up seven rushing touchdowns that's four more than any other team in the league uh, so I like Austin Eckler against the Chiefs this coming week and on the flip side the Chargers rushing defense isn't very good either uh, neither is their passing defense so I would also argue that Clyde Edwards Hilaire will have a hell of a game that's going to be a heavy Rushing game on both sides of the ball. Obviously, the Chiefs are going to air it up because you have Patrick Mahomes and 20 superstars uh, out there on the edge. But, uh, yeah, I expect Clyde edwards Hilaire to have a pretty decent week as well. Yeah, his fantasy owners would be happy if he does. There there are a lot of people that drafted him high that are griping right now because he hasn't done anything in two weeks. (laughs) Yeah, it's coming, and this is a good game for that to happen. But, uh, yeah, I like Austin Eckler, and Aaron Jones is your number three. The dude balled out, had, what, what'd you say, four touchdowns against Detroit on Monday night. So uh, I like I like how they're establishing their run game with him, dumping it out into the flats for Aaron Jones. That allows Aaron Rodgers to air it out downfield to his guys. Uh, so Aaron Jones, I like it there. Let's move on to number two. Number two. 
you know, I, I, <laughs> it's weird to have have this guy at number two, honestly. He probably should be number one. But I have CMC as my number two for this week. Uh, going up against Houston, Houston is 27th against running backs uh, so far in the first two games. And it is confirmed at this point that Tyrod Taylor will not be playing in the Thursday night game. And so – you have to imagine they get up in this game. You know, Christian McCaffrey is a good fantasy option because of his passing game value. Uh, but don't forget, that dude's an animal rushing the ball, too. Like, he he gets his yards running the ball. So uh, when they get up in this game, I think they're going to have a lot of Christian McCaffrey running the ball. And so, you know, he's an obvious pick to have, you know, like I said, probably should be number one, uh, but I'm going to keep him at number two. The only reason he's number two for me, honestly, is because it's a short week and they might pull back a little in the fourth quarter when they're absolutely slaughtering the Texans. But what I, who I replaced him with this week at number one, assuming he can stay healthy for the game, is Dalvin Cook going against Seattle. Because like Zach mentioned earlier, as of right now, Seattle is last in the league against running backs in terms of fantasy. And so far, Dalvin Cook has 20-plus carries in both of his games. He has 10 total targets over the first two weeks, which is what we wanted to see was him getting more targets. That only adds to, to how great he can be. So – as long as he's healthy, I think Dalvin Cook has a chance to have a really, really big game for the Vikings and be the top back this week. Yeah, I can't argue with either one of the, those guys are going to have a hell of a week. One more guy I would like to throw in there is Josh Jacobs against the Miami Dolphins. Miami has the fifth. They, they're giving up the fifth most rushing yards per game and they're tied for the second most touchdowns given up in the league uh, rushing wise so I like Josh Jacobs especially with the Raiders being able to move the ball through the air they're going to try to get him more involved to really get this offensive flow and so I like Josh Jacobs against Miami well let me see what you think about this because I, I heard um, you know just a couple hours ago before we started uh, talking about this that uh, Josh Jacobs it, John Gruden was quoted as saying that Josh Jacobs is very questionable for their game this week, uh, possibility that he doesn't play. So do you think Kenyon Drake filling into that role can have the same impact as Josh Jacobs? Uh, yeah, I mean, Kenyon proved last year that he he's capable of taking on the workload and he's a he's a decent passing game back too so if he does step in there who knows he may be able to produce more than Jacobs has up to this point yeah and and with the passing game value there with Kenyon Drake you know I think because Derek Carr is injured and pro probably going to play um, but but is a little hurt right now that they're going to want to try to do things to get the ball out of his hand quickly and instead of just trying to figure out how to run with Kenyon Drake um, you know, have the little screen passes and little dump offs to Kenyon Drake as an extension of the run game kind of thing. So um, I think that can definitely bring some value to Kenyon Drake while Josh Jacobs is out. Yeah, true. All right. Uh, you want to summarize your top 10 real quick for everybody listening? Yeah, so I'll run them down. We started at 10 going to 1. We had the Broncos running backs going against the Jets, the Ravens running backs going against Detroit, Derek, or I'm sorry, Chris Carson at number 8 uh, going against Minnesota, 7 is Derek Henry against Indy, 6 is Alvin Kamara against the Patriots, 5 is Nick Chubb against the Bears, 4 is Austin Eckler against the Chiefs, Three is Aaron Jones against the 49ers. CMC comes in at number two going against Houston on Thursday night. And Dalvin Cook is my number one back this week playing in Seattle. There you go. Hefe's top 10 running backs for week three fantasy football. Uh, before we move on to the wide receivers, I would like to throw in some do not start type people uh, rushing wise. Do not play a running back from the following teams. Houston, Los Angeles Rams, New England Patriots, or the New York Jets. They are facing the Carolina Panthers, the Buccaneers, the Saints, and the Denver Broncos, all of which have top five rushing defenses. So completely avoid all of those. It will not end well for you. What do you think, Kevin? Yeah, I completely agree. I, I wouldn't even think about starting anybody from any of those teams. 
Well, there you have it. All right, let's move on to your top 10 wide receivers for week three in fantasy football, starting off with number 10. Number 10 is a guy that I was sour about coming into this year. I've drafted him every year he's been in the league. You know, I had a lot of confidence in him. But I was pretty salty, and I didn't draft him in any league this year because I didn't think he was going to do anything. But lo and behold, Marquise Brown is tearing it up right now. And and I think he could be higher on this list, honestly. Um, but I want to see him do do what he's been doing consistently. I would like to see it consistently. Uh, first two games have been pretty good. They they played Detroit, um, which is the their 14th right now against wide receivers. You would have to think because they played the Niners, right? And they don't really pass the ball like that. Um, but look, Marquise Brown done switched his number up, and now he looks really good. And and, you know, if Lamar Jackson is going to be having over 300 passing yards consistently, even though he has a huge rushing day also, then Marquise Brown's going to be really good. I think he has a good chance to be a top 10 wide receiver uh, for most weeks, in my opinion. Number nine uh, might shock a couple people, but Marvin Jones Jr. going against Arizona. Arizona right now is 23rd against the wide receivers. And, and look, Marvin Jones is getting a lot of usage. The Jags are having to throw a lot because they keep getting down in these games. And I don't think that's going to change. Or Arizona is probably going to get up very quickly in this game and stay up. So assuming that the Jaguars are passing a bunch this weekend, Marvin Jones Jr. seems to be the favorite target of Trevor Lawrence. He just had 11 targets in this last game. So Marvin Jones Jr. I think could and will be a top 10 uh, wide receiver this week coming in at nine and number eight it's going to be Stefan Diggs finally getting into the fold I think this week I think you'll see more of the passing game from the Bills you know Josh Allen only had 179 yards in the game where they scored 35 points and you know that was largely in part to the fact that they didn't have to pass the ball a lot so I think this week I think they're going to be in more passing situations. You know, Washington has a pretty good defense. And I think Stefan Diggs is going to be the immediate beneficiary of more of a passing game. And I think Josh Allen has a good game here. Um, and I, I think Stefan Diggs should go back to his prominent role of being a top 10 wide receiver, maybe even top five. Uh, but he's coming in at number eight this week for me. Yeah, you know how I feel about Stefan Diggs. He's one of my top three overall overall wide receivers. Uh, Josh Allen still hasn't had that huge game this year, but it's coming. We all know it's coming. I think this is going to be the week. So I definitely like Stefan Diggs. Uh, they're at number eight. Let's move on to your number seven pick. Number seven is one of the most consistent guys. We talk about it so much. Keenan Allen is back up here in my top ten. Going up against Kansas City, who is 11th in the league against wide receivers in fantasy football right now. But look, Keaton Allen had to be up here somewhere. He gets the volume. Like I mentioned with Austin Eckler, this should be a very high-scoring game, at least in my opinion it will be. Um, so I think Keenan Allen has a good chance of even getting in the end zone this week, maybe getting, you know, 9, 10, 11 targets, you know, maybe eight, 7, 8 catches, something like that. I could see that kind of day out of Keenan Allen. And uh, so he comes in at number seven for me. And then number six is going to be D hop going against Jacksonville. Um, you know, just because D D hop, D hop is D hop, right? Like he's going to get his, he, he, you don't hear about him all the time. Um, but, but he's just consistently getting touchdowns. He consistently gets the targets and I don't think that's going to change, especially going against a Jaguar, somebody that he used to play twice a year and used to do him dirty twice a year. So he's going to come back into Jacksonville and absolutely slaughter the Jaguars. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have both of those guys in my must starts. Uh, Kansas City, I already talked about their defense, not very good. And Jacksonville is one of the worst in the league. So uh, I definitely think they're going to have huge games. All right, so number five. Number five creeping up here is going to be T. Higgins. Um, you know, somebody that 
it, ever since he came in last year, has been a favorite target of Joe Burrow. Even when Joe Burrow went down, he was able to still produce. He's just so consistent, and I think this is a week where he has a chance to have a big game. Now, and you know, it could be Tyler Boyd that has the big game. It could be Jamar Chase that has a big game. Yeah, I, I was I was getting ready to say I, I have that whole wide receiver core on my list against the Steelers. I just I can't I don't know who to pick. Yeah, it's tough week to week to know who to pick, um, really. You know, and, and they all put up uh, pretty pretty similar numbers this past week. You know, but it's kind of, you know, pretty good target share, I guess. But I think T. Higgins is, is going to be the guy for them this week, the one that puts up the most points, which is just an educated guess. Like I said, he's a favorite target of Joe Burrow. And Pittsburgh's secondary has been the vulnerability of that defense. And, and I think that'll get exploited this week. Joe Burrow needs to make a point after having three interceptions on three straight pass attempts in the last game. Um, there are some things that need to be corrected. I think they'll get it corrected in this game, um, at least from the offensive standpoint. And T. Higgins is going to be the fifth best receiver in fantasy football this week. And right above him is going to be Tyreek Hill. Um you know, for a lot of the reasons I talked about with Keenan Allen, I think that game is going to be very high scoring. And the only thing that worries me about putting them this high is that right now the Chargers are second in the league against wide receivers. Um, so I was a little iffy. But after the, what we saw this past week with everybody on that entire offense scoring and touching the ball, except for Tyreek Hill for most of the game, um, you know, I think Ty, they're going to go back to Tyreek. I don't think it'll be another you know 11 catch 197 yards and two touchdowns that's a huge game but I think you'll see Tyree Kill and Patrick Mahomes get back to what they normally do you know and have a good enough game to creep up to the number four uh, wide receiver for the week and then number three is going to be Debo Samuel um, you know a little bit disappointing week compared to what I thought he was going to have uh, this past week but they're going up against Green Bay who is sixth against wide receivers so that's not very promising but with the 49ers like the 49ers running backs have more injuries than the Ravens running backs at this point like they just hurt like three running backs Trey Sermon was in there for one play and got a concussion like their luck with running backs over the last few years has been ridiculous and with the fact that they're going to have to lean on, you know, some guy that they just elevated from the practice squad like two weeks ago and carry on Johnson, who is on a different team not too long ago. Like, I think they're going to want to come into this game and pass. I do think the 49ers will probably get down in this game and that'll lead to them having to pass. Debo Samuel is a, a freak of nature. I think he'll be the immediate beneficiary of a, more of a passing game there in San Francisco. So, uh, Debo Samuel, I think, has another big week like he did in week one and is the number three wide receiver. Yeah, I can't argue with any of those. Uh, Tyreek Hill is just a freak, man. He's capable of exploding downfield for 80 yards at any given moment. Uh, it is a tough matchup, but you, Tyreek Hill, man, he he produces every single week. Him and Travis Kelsey, for that matter. I mean, nobody can stop either one of them. Uh, so I do like the, those two. I like Debo Samuel as well. Uh, so, all right, number two. Number two. Now, the, these top two, I mean, you, you after what they've done the first two weeks, you had to put them here. Number two is Tyler Lockett. Going up against Minnesota, the 30th against wide receivers. Um, they are who we thought they were. You know, their defense is trash again. And I think Seattle is just going to be able to do what they've been doing. You know, Russ and Tyler Lockett are in a groove right now. And I think they're going to keep that going this week. Tyler Lockett has another big game. He's, he's wide receiver two right now in fantasy. And I think he comes out being wide receiver two this week. Number one is the number one wide receiver in fantasy right now. And that is Cooper Cup for the Los Angeles Rams. They're playing the Buccaneers, who are actually 31st against wide receivers. Um, I've mentioned it before, their secondary uh, doesn't look great right now, especially with all the injuries. Maybe if they were healthy, uh, they'd, they'd be a better unit, you know, probably so. But uh, right now, 
they look suspect, and I think the Rams will be able to take advantage of that. You know, Cooper Cup's volume so far has been ridiculous for a wide receiver, especially when you think about the fact that Sean McVay likes to run the ball, and and they generally, you know, use Robert Woods a decent bit, but Cooper Cup has been eating targets and making the most of it. He's had two huge games, and I think he's going to have another big-time game and be wide receiver one once again. Yeah, I have Cooper Cup on my list of must starts for this week. I also do want to toss in there Robert Woods. He's not getting the volume Coop is getting. He's not getting the production. But the Tampa Bay Buccaneers passing defense is one of the worst in the league. Like you said, this is going to be airing it out on both sides of the ball. Uh, So I also like Robert Woods. He should provide you some pretty good fantasy value there as well. And one more guy you didn't discuss on your top 10 uh, is Devontae Smith against the Dallas passing defense Uh, they're not very good I like Devontae Smith and that Eagles wide receiving core uh, this week as well and everybody else uh, you pretty much hit the nail on the head with my list so you want to run down your top 10 summarize it real quick yeah yeah so at number 10 we have Marquise Brown again could be higher um, but until I see what him continue to do what he's been doing consistently he's my number 10 guy uh, number nine, I think Marvin Jones has a big week. Um, I, he's been getting a lot of targets. He's my number nine. Stefan Diggs is number eight going against Washington. Keenan Allen in that Chiefs game is number seven. Six is D Hop. Number five is T Higgins going against Pittsburgh. Tyreek Hill is number four going against the Chargers. Debo Samuel against the Packers comes in at three. And number two and number one are wide receiver one and wide receiver two, Tyler Lockett, Cooper Cup, getting it done. There you have it, FA's week three wide receiving, wide receivers top 10 list. Uh, A couple of guys I want to throw out to absolutely avoid. I have Brandon Cooks on my fantasy team. Uh, He's done very well for me the first two weeks, but this is not the week. This Carolina Panthers defense is the best in the league right now, so I'm avoiding Brandon Cooks. Uh, I also don't like Terry McLaurin against the Buffalo Bills, uh, nor do I like any of the Dallas wide receivers against the Philadelphia Eagles. The Philadelphia Eagles passing defenses has been one of the best in the league. So I don't like any of those guys, Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, CeeDee Lamb. Uh, I'm, well, I'm staying away from them if I possibly can. And I don't like any New York Jets wide receivers against the Denver Broncos defense. They are going to absolutely light Zach Wilson up, and he is not going to have another good game just like he did last week. What do you think, Hefe? Well, okay, there's a lot to unpack there because I think you have – Don't get caught up in the big names. Don't get caught up in the big names. Look, Terry, you have to play Terry McLaurin. Uh, I knew it. I knew it. A good, I mean, good, great receivers are matchup proof. And Terry McLaurin is on his way to being a great receiver, if not already there. So I think he, he's matchup proof, should have a good day. Um, you know, the Dallas, the only, my problem with the Dallas wide receivers is that you don't know who's going to get the targets game to game, um, especially Amari Cooper. He's just so consistent, so steady handed. Uh, you know, when it matters most, that's who Dak's going to. CD Lamb has seemed to be doing pretty good lately. So, um, you know, it's tough to sit them. We know, we know they love to pass ball. So I, I don't know. Yeah, but the, but look at the look at the defense they have played in the first two the first two games. They had the Buccaneers and the Chargers. Both of the Buccaneers are towards the very very bottom, and the Chargers are right down there in the bottom ten. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles is a top five passing defense right now. Well, but who of the Eagles? The, the Eagles defense has had to go against the Falcons, and they just went against a team that loves to run the ball. Kyle Shanahan's offense and the 49ers. So, you know, those after two weeks, you know, there are a lot of numbers that are that are tilted in weird directions right now, uh, depending on who people have played. Um, you know, I'm I'm not as confident in the Eagles passing defense as other people are, but I can understand the numbers. The numbers say to trust it, but I don't. All right. Well, we'll find out. That's a that's a beauty of fantasy football is we will find out. Uh, I would assume you will agree with me on the New York Jets, Rod receivers going against the Broncos, though. Yeah, absolutely. Even though I think Corey Davis is going to get a lot of targets most weeks, they look awful right now. Yeah. 
they're they're pretty bad. All right, so uh, any quarterbacks you want to talk about? Yeah, just some guys to graze over real quick. I think Derek Carr, um, you know, assuming he can stay healthy, um, you know, I think he needs to be rostered. Daniel Jones, uh, for some reason, isn't as rostered as I thought he would be. Uh, for somebody that is a running quarterback, I thought for sure he'd be on uh, drafted in most leagues, but I guess not. So he needs to be picked up by somebody, especially after what we saw this week. He'll definitely be picked up in most leagues, I feel like. But then Teddy Bridgewater, old Teddy Two Gloves, um, has been balling out with this Denver team. And it's been weaker opponents so far, and and I understand that. But, um, you know, he, he has a good cast around him. At some point this season, he'll get Jerry Judy back and be even better. He's mobile, too. He doesn't go looking for the run. But if he needs to, he's athletic enough to get you some rush yards. So those are three guys that – I think should be on people's teams and should be rostered in pretty much every league. And I also want to tell people not to give up on Tannehill. We kind of mentioned it earlier talking about the Titans with Derrick Henry. Um, but look, the, this offense is, is just getting going. They're learning a new offense with the new OC. Um, you know, they're introducing a couple new pieces. You know, Taylor Lewan was an early scratch for the game in Seattle. We'll have to see what happens with him. He's a pretty important piece of that offense line. Um, but look, things will get better. Tannehill is going to be fine, you know, and that offense will get going again. He's had one touchdown and 75 pass attempts, which is tough to hear, um, but it'll get better. Yeah, I can't I can't dispute that. I do think it'll get better, especially once they get more familiar with this offense, once they that chemistry continues to build, especially once Julio Jones gets up to speed and you have him and AJ Brown on the outside, Tannehill will get his. Uh Derrick Henry is back. That will definitely help. Tannehill and the wide receivers establishing that dominant run game. Uh, so I agree with you. Don't give up on Tannehill. I do like Derek Carr. He's been balling out. Uh, Daniel Jones, I'm iffy about. I'm not so sure there, but I can, I can definitely understand where you're coming from. And Teddy Bridgewater, I happened to roster him last week, put him in, and he did very well for me. So I agree. Uh, all right. You got uh, oh, some tight ends, huh? Yeah, just a, a couple things real quick. You know, Gronk, we mentioned it last week. It looked like he could be fantasy relevant. And what did he do? He came out, had another huge game, another two-touchdown performance. So as of right now, Gronk is an every-week starter until further notice. And it looks like Tom Brady and Gronk are back to doing what they used to do. So he's he could end up as tight end number one this year. But he's going to have some competition for tight end number one because – the guy that I predicted to be tied in number five is getting even more volume than I imagined he would. That offense looks better than I imagined it would. TJ Hawkinson, if you drafted, if you waited till the fifth or sixth round and you drafted TJ Hawkinson, you got a good deal because he is balling out right now. As long as he can stay healthy, he has every opportunity to be tied in one this year. So good for you if you got him. Yeah, absolutely. Hell of value there. I was really hoping I was able going to be able to snag him up. I was not. Uh, I did snag up Gronk towards the later rounds, and that has proven dividends. Uh, so I do like your assessment on both of those guys. They're both definitely putting up the, the numbers and the value. All right, you have anything else you want to throw in here? Uh, nope, I think that'll do it for week three. All right, we appreciate you guys all tuning in, and hopefully Hefe and I were able to provide you with some insight to help you get an advantage in your fantasy league. Uh, just a reminder, you can hop in our weekly pick skin pick em contest where you can directly compete with Brad, Hefe, and myself. You can find the link on our Facebook, Twitter pages, at Horseman Sports. If you're able to beat us on the season, we'll get you on the podcast. A uh, special shout out to all of our WUBI live listeners for tuning in. You can catch the Horseman Pro Football Talk podcast and Fantasy Central on WUBI live every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, the app is available for download in your app store or you can visit WUBI.live. Uh, good luck to all of you all this weekend and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.